Okay, hi everyone. So this will be a review for chapter one, chapter ten revision quiz set number one. Okay, so I received I have received your responses since collected since yesterday, and as you have seen here, there's only forty responses, uh, thirty missing. Not sure what happened to them. But let's move on. So based on the response here, re responses here, I think I'll be discussing question two, three, six, eight, ten. 13, 17, and 18. A total of 8 questions of the 20 questions being asked. Basically, all the questions that have 40% and above. Let's look at question number 2. Question number 2 says a student attaches one end of a hose. A hose is like a rubber pipe you use for water. The, yeah, the pipe, rubber pipe. To a lamp post, tiang lampu. At the other end, he stretches it out and performs a quick up and down motion to produce waves on the line. To increase the wavelength, he can. Okay, this seems like a very interesting situation. Probably we should draw it out. Draw it out will probably make things clearer. Okay, this is our situation. We have a lamp post that we attach one end of the hose. So let's just assume this is our lamp post. Okay, we don't care about the lamp. So we have a hose. Okay, maybe in blue. This hose will be connected, or let's say you tie it on the tiang, tiang lampu. Okay, and then what happens is while you're holding this hose, what you do is you give it a quick up and down motion. You shake up and down and up. And down by repeating this motion eventually you will produce a sinusoidal wave on the on the hose itself okay so what the question asked for is if now you have a wavelength that looks like this they want it to increase the wavelength increase the wavelength probably want to make it something like this instead okay you increase the wavelength so how do we increase the wavelength you see B equals F lambda, probably the, 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 the first equation that comes to your mind regarding wavelength. Then you see you want to increase the wavelength. So what options do you have here? Well, if we look just on this, based on this equation, probably we can have a few options. Option one will probably be we keep the wave speed constant. But what we do is we decrease the frequency. Okay, let me split it really clearly. Okay, we decrease the frequency. Only we are able to increase the wavelength. So uh, it's mathematics. You can try to figure it out. So when we say decrease the frequency, what we actually mean is we want the person, the student to shake fewer times per second. Okay, that will mean by you decrease the frequency. Why is it so? Okay, so frequency of a wave depends on the oscillation, the disturbance that you put. Okay, so now the student is the one that introduced the disturbance to the host. If it's just stretched it out, then you'll be just a straight line. But because of the student performing the up and down motion, only you will see wave traveling down the hose. Okay, so now if you imagine, if I shake up and down a lot of times per second, let's say I shake five times per second, then you'll probably see uh, five complete wave cycles coming out from my hand towards the lamppost in one second. So you'll see more wave cycles coming out from my hand per unit second. Okay, so that will mean a higher frequency. Okay. If I decrease the frequency, means by instead of doing five or complete up and down swing, up and down per second, I probably change it to one. Then now you only see one complete wave cycle coming out from my hand to traveling towards the lamppost. That will mean by I decrease the frequency. So if you look at this equation here, you can see that if I decrease the frequency, the lambda will increase. Okay, so this is option one. What can I do for option two is I instead keep this frequency constant. 
means by I still remain the speed of how I swing up and down the up and down motion I keep it constant but what I do is I can increase the wave speed okay how do I increase the wave speed I have to do something to the medium remember wave speed depends only on the medium okay so if it depends on medium means by this is not the relevant formula to use we need to use a formula that describes wave speed only in terms of the things in the medium the properties of the medium so for this we will relate it to the equation v equals to square root t over mu t is tension mu is mass per unit length so for this situation here if i want to increase the wave speed i have two options it's either i increase the tension or i decrease the mass per unit length but i believe uh, you can see quite clearly here we are not changing the hose we don't change it to the heavier hose or a lighter hose so we are not changing the mass per unit length of the hose instead they provide option increase or decrease the tension so i believe your answer here will be you increase the tension okay so that will be the two options that you may pick in order to increase the wavelength so because of that i believe you can see the answer will be well you shake fewer times per second not the best time to pick let me pick another color uh shake and fewer times per second then you increase the tension so this one will be my answer okay you might be thinking whether i can do two things at the same time yes i can stretch it tighter while decreasing the oscillation frequency in that case what i do is i uh, let's say it's an option three instead of keeping one of them constant i increase the tension while decreasing the frequency then you see the wavelength increase even greater okay so it works as well so the answer will be this one over here so that's for question two let's move on to talk about question three Question 3 mentions that you have a sound source and this sound source is moving towards a stationary observer. So if the source is producing a sound of velocity v and the wavelength of lambda, then what is the velocity and wavelength of the sound detected by the observer? Okay, They tell you that the source produces sound with velocity v and wavelength lambda. And now, this sound source here is moving towards a stationary observer and because it's moving towards a stationary observer it's asking whether the sound detected will change or not for the velocity and the wavelength so if the sound source moves towards the observer does the velocity change or does the wavelength changes or not so these are our two focus for this question it a bit okay so for a stationary sound source let's say if this sound source is not moving then the wave that we might probably see a spherical wave i believe you can imagine if it's a speaker stationary then you see sound source then you see the sound wave traveling out in spherical wave something like that Okay, I'm not good in drawing, but this is what happens if the sound source is stationary. But now, if this sound source is moving, then you might probably see a situation which is something like this. Let's say it's moving to the right. Okay, with a velocity, uh, they didn't specify, so I don't write anything. It's moving to the right. And probably what you see is something like this. Okay, this looks fine. But you see, one part will be slightly more squeezed 
compared to the other. Okay, I believe you get the idea. As you can see here, the wavelength is this much before this. But because it's moving to the right, you can see that the wavelength is being squeezed. Okay, the new wavelength is being smaller. So the new wavelength will be smaller than the original wavelength. Okay, uh, just to be very, very clear, my, this is my source. Then this is my observer. It's moving towards an observer. So if it's moving towards an observer, the observer detects the sound wave which is smaller in terms of wavelength. If the observer happens to be over here, observer here, then the sound source is moving away. If the sound source is moving away from the observer, then you will see, okay, this is not what the question is asking for, but if it's moving away, you will see a larger wavelength. Okay, so this is what you can see just by looking at the diagram. So with that said, I believe we can pick the answer to be wavelength will be smaller than what's being produced. What's being produced is lambda. What's being detected is the word wavelength itself. So the wavelength will be smaller than the wavelength produced. So this can be an answer and this can be an answer as well. Okay, so we have to choose between these two options. So for the velocity, they provide either it remains the same or it's greater than the uh, sound produced initially. Okay, so for this, it's really difficult to answer, but I can tell you straight away the answer is the velocity doesn't change. Why does the velocity doesn't change? It's because if you produce a wave a year, it means that the wave has already leave has already leave the sound source. So if the wave has already leave the sound source, the sound source is moving won't affect the wave because the wave has already leave the sound source already. So you can think of it as the sound source is not touching the wave. If it's not touching the wave, how can you change the velocity of the wave? You cannot change. Okay, so uh, that's a rough idea. It's out of your syllabus, but you can think of it like that. Okay, uh, if the observer is moving, then the velocity will change, but that's related to relative velocity, which is uh, still beyond your syllabus. Okay, so this question is slightly out of your syllabus actually, and the answer will be this answer over here. Okay, so that's for question 3. Let's continue with the next question. The next question is question 6. Zoom in a little. Question 6 says that when sound waves propagate in air, okay, sound waves propagating in air, two particles which are 0 0.2 meter apart vibrate anti-phase. Anti-phase means by if one is moving upwards, one is moving downwards. If one reached the crest, the other one reached the trough they move oppositely okay so and these two particles they mention that is 0 0.2 meter apart and they tell you the speed of sound which is 320 meter per second and they ask for the frequency of the sound wave this should be a relatively direct question if you know the concept of phase really clearly that is a really direct question but never mind let me demonstrate it a little bit okay minimize it a little Okay, so when they say it's vibrating anti-phase, right, means by, let's say you have a sound wave. Okay, uh, we still draw a sinusoidal wave or sound wave, right? Let's say this is my sound wave. An anti-phase, two particles that are anti-phase will look something like this. So I can say this particle at this position here. Comparing with, <coughs> with this particle over here, which is at this position, okay, let me draw the perpendicular in the equilibrium line. Okay, so we can see these two particles here are actually anti phase. Why? Because now one is at crest, one is at trough. Okay, 
they have reached their maximum displacement but in opposite direction so they are moving opposite uh, to each other okay uh, if you want to think a bit harder about it then let's say this uh, wave is traveling to the right then for the next instant then probably the wave will look something like this okay pardon my drawing huh? we look something like this then now if you see before this let me be very very clear okay the green represent the initial initially my displacement is this high for this point a over here let's call this a whereas for point b over here my displacement is also maximum but in the opposite direction that's initial then next i the wave have moved for a little bit to the right so as we can see here now the displacement has decreased by a little bit but it's still in the same direction or you can think of it as the particle moved down but if you look at the point b over here it also decreased in displacement okay you can see it moved the same way but they move oppositely this one the particle move downwards then this one the particle move upwards the amount being moved is the same okay it means that they move the same way just that they move in opposite rhythm if one goes down one goes up if one move down 2 cm then one move up 2 cm if one reach the up peak then the other one reach the down trough so they move opposite each other in terms of rhythm so we call this kind of situation anti base anti base okay so if you if uh, i believe you can see that if i extrapolate this and i extrapolate this line you can see that this is actually half of the complete wavelength why is it half you can see this is one part of the wave cycle one fourth of the wave cycle second second fourth okay means like this okay part one part two part three part four okay you split into four parts then you see this inside consists of two parts so two over four half so half of the wavelength so they say two particles they are 0 0.2 meter apart means by these two particles a and b they are empty phase the r distance between them it's 0 0.2 meter so knowing that if we know lambda over 2 equals to 0 0.2 we can easily know that lambda will be 0 0.4 meter if lambda is 0 0.4 meter now we want to find the frequency use v equals to f lambda okay probably the screen pan not very clear so substitution 320 hertz equals to frequency you want to find lambda is 0 0.4 you move everything around your frequency will be 800 hertz so your answer will be this okay so the main thing that this question try to test you is whether you know the idea of antiphase or not so by knowing the idea of antiphase you should be able to solve this question rather directly Okay, feel free to ask question in the group if you have more questions if you still don't really understand it okay so let's move on to question eight okay, yeah let me enlarge this meter. okay question eight says the diagram above shows a metal wire stretched between two supports p and t okay let me bring this up later so we can see it more okay so and this is support P, this is support T. So this thing here is the support that they are talking about. This is the support that they are talking about. And this is the second support. Okay, then they continue. And this P and T is 4x apart. As you can see here, 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x. So they are 4x apart. Three small pieces of paper are placed at position Q, R, and S. 
means by I, I place a small pieces of paper and say I put one piece of paper here then I put one piece of paper here and then I put one piece of paper here then when the wire vibrates at a certain frequency the small pieces the small piece of paper at R remains on the wire so this one remains on the wire but small pieces of paper at Q and S drop off so this one Q drop off then S also drop off so uh, if it drop off means by the string over there is moving only the paper will drop off right if the string is not moving like at position R it's not moving only the paper will stay on the wire so actually what does it mean it means that they tell if the if the paper it's remain intact means by this is a node why is it a node because it's not moving if it's not moving only the paper can stay on top if this one falls off means by it's moving so we can assume it's an anti node and we can assume this as anti node as well so uh, if we extrapolate if you have support just like guitar if you see this kind of support means by this is the end of the string you can, you can think of it as a node same for this side as well you can think of it as a node so n a n a n so now they ask for the what is the wavelength which is produced at the wire so i think uh, we can do this first n a n a n let's try to draw the pattern so if n means by it's at equilibrium let's draw the equilibrium line first so n equilibrium 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 and d node means by you pick you pick pick maximum amplitude uh, pick okay so if we draw the line it will look something like this okay uh, the other way around standing wave it, it will oscillate between two two direction so this is the other way around so as you can see this pink line here represents a complete wavelength actually so you can see this is a complete wavelength right because it's a shape like this if it's a shape like this means by it's a complete wavelength so it means by what uh, the distance here is x x x x so 4x over here equals to lambda so why is the wavelength the wavelength will be 4x so the answer will be this okay so that's for question a wow let's move on question 10 okay, let me enlarge a little bit Okay, question 10 what is the phase difference between two points again oh phase difference again phase difference between two points separated by a distance of 3 cm okay the distance between that two point is 3 cm and the wavelength of the wave is 5 cm this one is key this one is also key you are given two length then you want to find the distance the phase difference between two points and that two points separated by 3 cm okay, let me make this smaller so i get space to draw okay so in this case i can think of um, this is a wave right okay so let's say this is our wave so let's say this is a point and uh, let's don't pick this point this point can be a bit complicated let's say i want to compare this point and another point which is 3 cm away let's say somewhere around here okay i want to check between this point and this point what's the phase difference and this one in terms of length they have a diff distance between them is 3 cm 
and they also tell you that the wavelength which is from here to here this will be 5 cm okay it's indicated in the question the wavelength is 5 cm so they ask for the phase difference okay to understand phase difference this you have to understand what is the meaning of phase difference okay um basically okay this one is a bit too much but i'll just try to explain when sine theta equals to a certain value let's say equals to a it will come back to equals to a when sine equals to pi plus to pi then it will come back to a then the next time it comes back it will be sine pi plus uh, 2 of 2 pi then it will come back to a so what it means here is the same shape will repeat the same cycle every 2 pi radian so if you go through 2 pi radian you come back to the original position then you continue again another cycle again after 2 pi you move into a new cycle you keep on repeat the same cycle for every 2 pi okay the the it will come back to the original position after you go through 2 pi uh, if you look it over here let's say you start from here after 2 pi you will be here then you start another cycle the same thing then you stop here 4 pi okay after going through 2 pi here again you reach 4 pi then you come back to the original place then you repeat the same cycle again so every cycle will cost you 2 pi because that's the properties of sine and cos okay let's say i pick this point then after 2 pi then i'll come back here then I repeat the same pattern again to that will cost 2 pi in terms of radian so the in terms of radian from here to here it will be 2 pi radian so you can think of the difference the difference between here and here in terms of radian uh, in terms of radian this will be 2 pi radian because 2 pi is equivalent to one complete cycle okay this is the property of uh, sinusoids okay every 2 pi you finish a cycle so now the question that they ask is from here to here how many how much radian so to find that well it's just ratio you take 3 divided by 5 then you get the ratio then you times 2 pi then you know how much is your uh, is your phase difference between this point and this point you know the total for one complete cycle is 2 pi but now they are not asking for a total cycle they are only asking for a portion only which is 3 cm if you can are able to find 3 cm as a ratio to a complete wavelength then you can know what is the phase difference using a ratio relationship so it's like uh, a over b times one complete cycle to see how much of a cycle have you completed so this one uh, will pro uh, this one equals to 0 0.6 times 2 pi right means by you have gone through 0 0.6 or 60 percent of a complete cycle okay that's the idea behind it huh? okay so you can also think of it as the phase difference here and here the difference in terms of phase is uh 0 0.6 times 2 pi they difference by how much of a complete cycle they different they differ by 60 percent of a complete cycle okay, that's the meaning of phase you can think of it like that so the answer to this question will be this one okay uh, phase is a bit complicated a bit abstract to explain but i hope you get the idea okay so that's for question 10 let's move on to the next question question 13 let me enlarge it a bit 
Question 13 says the diagram above shows a standing wave in a string fixed at both ends. Okay, uh, the diagram is a little bit small. This is the two end, then you have your standing wave. Sorry, I didn't copy a bigger version. Okay, which statement is not true? Basically, it's a standing wave. So we want to find something about standing wave here. Okay, so let's go through the statement one by one. First, the string vibrates the air around it. Okay. Uh, whether it's correct or wrong, that is correct. Okay, why is it correct? Uh, you have to understand how most of the instrument works. Okay, let's say uh, the most common instrument, musical instrument in the world, uh, your vocal, your 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 sound box, your your uh, the sound produced by your mouth. Okay. So what, how it works is uh, you have your, oh, this is a bad, <laughs> this is a bad drawing. Uh, imagine your throat and your, yeah, your, whatever. So this is a pipe itself, okay? Your sound box, your vocal cords, everything. This is a pipe itself. So inside your pipe, actually, Standing with is happening. I'm so sorry for the bad drawing, but I just need you to get the idea. Okay, the drawing is secondary. Okay, so uh, you have standing with happening in your vocal cords. Then, how does the standing with produce a sound? Basically, it's because when you open your mouth or you or or when you yeah when you project your sound, you are actually the standing with here is affecting the air outside the mouth. Okay, so the air outside the mouth will oscillate following the frequency of the uh, of the standing wave that you produce in your throat. Okay, is throat the correct one? Uh, if you learn bio, then correct me. Okay, I can't remember much. It's like um, do you remember the question initially where you have your host? Yeah, this question here. The student attached the hose to a lamp post, then he stretched it up, perform up and down. Okay, so what causes the wave is the up and down here. This disturbance causes a wave to travel down the road, right? So for any musical instrument, actually, this standing wave here, you can think of it as the kit putting the up and down motion. This is the disturbance. Okay, this is causing disturbance and it disturbs the air outside your throat. This is the disturbance. Let's say if guitar, the standing wave produced as the guitar at the guitar is the disturbance. It causes or it disturbs the air around it. So how how would the disturbance look like? If you look back to the kit, it swings down up and down one complete cycle, then you see one complete wave flank, one complete wave front move through the, uh, the rope. If this is the case, if this standing wave uh, oscillate once, then the air outside here will also oscillate once. So the frequency here will be equal to the frequency out here. This is like a driver. Okay, This drive the frequency this drive the oscillations of the air outside. This is the pernier bug. This is the cause that the air outside vibrates. This vibrates the air around it. Vibrates with what frequency? If this standing frequency standing wave has a frequency of five hertz, then outside it will be five hertz. If this standing wave has a frequency of one thousand hertz, then this will be a one thousand hertz wave being produced out. The frequency should be the same because this is driving the air to oscillate. This one oscillate once, then this one you oscillate once. If this one oscillate hundred times, then this one you oscillates hundred times. So the frequency should be the same. So with that said, I can say that the the air vibrates with the same frequency as the standing wave. So this is correct as well. Frequency is the same. So next thing is is the wavelength the same or not? Well, you have to relate back to this equation over here. V equals to F lambda. If I tell you that the frequency must be the same, and V depends on what? Depends only on 
Okay, this one you should be able to answer already. Depends only on medium. Okay, depends only on medium. So if it's inside here, uh, it's different medium, even though it's air, but uh, I probably I shouldn't use this example. I should use back the guitar. Your guitar string, your guitar string is oscillating up and down like this, right? But now the medium is the string. But later, your medium of the uh, sound wave later, when it's traveling through air, the medium coming out is air. So before it's string, after that it's air. So change of medium. So if the medium change, so uh, this will be affected as well. So this will either increase or decrease. So if frequency is the same, if the wave speed increase, then the wavelength have to increase. If the wave speed decrease, then the wavelength have to decrease. So if you see, if there's a change of medium from string to air, then there must be changes to the wave speed. If there's changes to the wave speed, because we know that frequency remains constant, then we know that the wavelength must change as well. It can't be the same. The wavelength can't be the same. So if it can't be the same, then same wavelength will be wrong. Okay. Then the last one, the standing wave is the superposition of the propagating wave and its reflection. Yes, if you're not sure why, go watch back my video. So this will be the answer because they're asking for what is not true. Okay, so that's for question 13. Let's move on. Question 17. Okay, question 17 is similar. I don't want to discuss this question. It's similar to tutorial question 10. Basically, it's not just similar, it's almost identical. So if you are not sure how to do this question, go watch my video. Okay, it's under the playlist for chapter 10 tutorial. Okay, it, I will show you how I derive these equations. Okay. I derive these equations, but the answer at the end will be this. Go watch the video, please. Okay, that's for question 17. Move on. Last question, question 18. Oh, what happened here? Let me shift this down a little bit. Okay, question 18. Part of a wave propagating in the string to the right. Okay, so it mentioned it's propagating and it's to the right. At time equal to zero is as shown in the diagram above. Okay, the diagram is too small. Then this is the diagram. You have your wave here. Then this wave is propagating to the right. If the period of the wave is capital T, which diagram shows the wave pattern of the part of the string after period t over 4? Okay, this is the period, and they say after this amount of time, how will the wave look like? So let me minimize this, make this smaller, so I have more space to draw. Then. Okay. So this is my wave, and this wave here will travel to the right. Something like this. It will travel to the right. Okay. So they say. Um. So if okay. Uh. If you look at this thing, you will see two shadow, right? One is the original position. The other one is the new position. So if one period has passed, 
what will happen is it will move by exactly one wave cycle it will move this much okay so it will move by one exactly one wavelength the distance travel will be one wavelength okay so why is it so it's because v is equals to lambda over t okay it comes from v equals to f lambda so if you have if your velocity is v if your wave speed is v if this much time has passed this much distance will be traveled so we know that this thing is traveling with a wave speed of v if this much if this much time has passed, means by it will travel this much distance. So it means by initially if it's here, then one period later it will move by one complete wavelength. The distance travel will be one complete wavelength. So this is how much it will move. Okay, something like this. So now they ask for when the time is t over 4. T over 4 means by instead of moving one complete wavelength, means by if it's divided by 4, then the wavelength should be divided by 4. So uh, the wavelength divided by 4 means by I re go back one part, I go back two part, I go back three part. So this is where I should end up. Okay, so the initial the, the initial position is somewhere around. initial is here and then the final is here so the amount of distance move here will be lambda over 4 so if this is the amount of distance move well wave is continuous right so you cannot just break it leave it in the middle like this so what do you need to do you extend it extend by how much one fourth of a complete wavelength a complete wavelength is something like this but you only need one fourth only so this will be the new line so your shape will be something like this so if you see here the one with this option will be a starts from the bottom okay if, if you may if you have time to listen i shift one fourth to the right right one fourth means by i shift this much If I shift this much, then I need to extend the line also. Extend by one fourth. So this will be the this will be the new line, the new wave shape right now. So how does this look like? This look exactly like this. So this will be the answer. The answer will be this one. Okay. So is there any question left? Well, that's all. I have finished discussing eight questions for quiz. Chapter 10, set number 1. That's all for this video. Thank you very much.